The nameplate said Mercury Cougar. That's why we knew it wasn't a T-Bird or a Montego. Whatever happened to the posh, jazzy little pony car? Well, it obviously fell into the Ford calorie tank and fattened up, like so many entries from the Ford stable. This fat cat now sits on a wheelbase of 114 inches. There's enough light back here to keep the bulb manufacturers in business for another five years. Leather, glove soft vinyl, wood trim, and a whole mess of instruments make up one of the plushest interiors of any personal luxury type car on the market for the money. The action starts up front with this 460 cubic inch V8 fed through a four barrel carburetor and topped off with a load of emission controls. With all that muscle up front, we expected more in the acceleration runs than it gave us. 30 happened 3.5 seconds after we left the line. The 50 mile an hour run took exactly seven seconds. On our third run, the emission controls let us reach 70 miles an hour in a little over 14 seconds. The cat ET'd the quarter mile in 18.20. We ran the first passing test from 30 to 50. It took 7.2 seconds. Going from 50 to 70, ate up 9.5. Power assisted front disc brakes are standard on the Cougar this year, and they do help. We stopped from 30 in 38 feet. At 50 miles an hour, strange things started to happen. The pedal began a noticeable fade. Correction was necessary in steering to keep it in a straight line, and it took 109 feet to stop. We had the brakes hot for this 70 mile an hour stop. No amount of correction would keep it from pulling to the right. We thought the nose would dive right into the asphalt. 209 feet brought it to a halt with smoke and binders. Lincoln Mercury made a departure from the unitized body for this new Cougar. They now employ a body and frame construction. The body is designed to be relatively rigid, while the torque box frame is semi-flexible. We noticed this flexing through the pylon course. We also noticed excessive body lean, with rebound and recovery very sluggish. If it only handled as good as it looked. As I watched it on the track, I found it hard to believe that somewhere back around 1967, Dan Gurney drove a Cougar in the Trans Am series. The front suspension features a coil spring on the single lower control arm. The new four-link rear suspension has coil springs, two upper as well as two lower control arms with angle-mounted shocks on each side. When they fed these spring rates through the computer, somebody must have pushed the button labeled Jelly because they're soft. And our tester had the supposed heavy-duty package. I'd hate to drive the one they call standard. Why the engineers build the personal luxury type car so soft and wallowy is beyond my understanding. Especially when stiffer springs, beefier sway bars, and man-sized heavy-duty shocks make for a far safer automobile, and one that's a pleasure to drive. With its vinyl Landau roof, long hood, short deck profile, and an interior like Cleopatra's chamber, the Cougar XR7 is two tons of pure luxury. However, on this stretched cat, we found the beauty to be only skin deep. Now, if they were to mount all this glitter atop some of the knowledge they gained from the Wood Brothers on the NASCAR trail, LM would undoubtedly have the car of the century. Oldsmobile have excelled in the intermediate department for several years now. And you might be happy to learn that the 74 line is perhaps as good as any previous offering. Now, to match the Cougar XR7, we chose the Salon model from Olds. It represents the top of the Cutlass totem pole. Now, if a mid-sized car is your preference, plus scads of luxury, then decision time between these two could be quite a chore. You've seen the Cougar. Now here's the Cutlass. On the first shot off the line, we had 30 in 3.7 seconds. The car had a 273 rear end with 350 cubic inch up front, and the ride to 50 was a little disappointing. It took about 8.5 seconds. If you get bored on the way to 50, you may fall asleep coaxing it to 60. This run took 15.6 seconds. We ran the quarter mile in 19 seconds flat at 78 miles an hour.
On the salon model, disc brakes up front are standard. From 30, it came to a halt in 34 feet. With hot brakes, this stop from 50 ate up 96 feet, with pedal fade now becoming quite noticeable. The binders on our test car were pulling severely to the right. No amount of correction would keep it in a straight line. From 70 miles an hour, this stop took 198 feet, with the pedal fading nearly to the floor. We ordered our Cutlass from the factory with the optional heavy-duty suspension system. For the few additional dollars, I consider it the best accessory buy on the market. It made this run through the pylons a piece of cake. Olds did it again. The bucket seats in this salon are superb. Just the right amount of firmness to provide excellent comfort and also good lateral support. Body lean was not excessive and the car recovered through the cones in good shape. This Cutlass took to high-speed cornering on the track as well as previous models. The big difference is the lack of power that the earlier models provided. This, of course, is due to the emission controls. There was not enough muscle to power through any of the turns. Consequently, entry into the corners had to be made at a slower speed. Some buyers I've spoken with are hesitant about ordering the heavy-duty suspension package for fear that the ride will be too rough. And this is true with some makes of cars, but not so with the old Cutlass. Their compromise between comfortable ride and good handling is excellent, and they have the secret. Underneath the salon, we had coil springs up front with a new larger stabilizer bar and beefy shocks. In the rear, they featured four link coil springs, another stabilizer bar, plus angled heavy-duty shocks. And the whole package rides on the standard offering of 15-inch steel-belted radial tires mounted on 7-inch wide wheels. The tires added greatly to the car's cornering ability. Oldsmobile has been a leader in the intermediate field for several years. If you can overlook some of the performance deficits caused by the EPA standards, you won't be disappointed in their newest production. Neither car is noteworthy as far as fuel consumption. They both averaged about 12 miles per gallon. They carried all the accessories that you could load on an automobile. Both were very luxurious. Both had a whale of a price tag. We gave the nod to the Cutlass in the braking department, the Cougar in acceleration, the Cutlass for handling and suspension, and rated them even up for ride factor. The overall edge, well, we gave it to the Cutlass, but only by a hubcap. <laughs>